tell you, Troy. I don't know. <laughs> He's, a tough act He's a tough act to follow. Wow. There's the greatness you were looking for today, Neil. There's the greatness. I told Neil there was gonna, he had to come today because there was going to be a great preacher here. And he's looking around saying, where, where? There's the greatness. You didn't get a preacher, but you got great music. There you go. Oh, I'll do as a son. <laughs> what a wonderful day to be here and a joy to gather together with smiles on our faces and a, our toes tapping as Troy was playing because it does make a difference in our attitude, in our spirit when we come into the house of the Lord to worship and enjoy the life that has been given to us by God. Let's begin with the call to worship. As we gather on this holy day, for the openness so that we may be surprised by God's grace, for discernment so we may hear Christ calling us, let us worship the living God. The song that we're going to sing is a beautiful song. He's got the whole world in his hands. Please stand. here this morning, God does have the whole world in his hands. It doesn't look like it when we look around at all the chaos and the problems that are there, but God is still on the throne and God is still in charge. So as we worship him today, let's keep those thoughts in our mind. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. You shower us with blessings, with chances to know your grace. Still, O oh Lord, we twist your promises and pray for blessings we can own. You call us to leave our selfish ways and follow your call to compassion. Still, O oh Lord, we choose shallow belief over transforming faith. You have told us that your love is enough, that the waters of mercy will not run dry. Still, O oh Lord, we choose fear instead of trust, hiding behind the illusion that we can survive on our own. Forgive us, Holy One, and by your forgiveness, offer us a chance to try again. Amen. Take a moment for a silent prayer between you and God.
You know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty we may become rich. Before you're seated, please take a moment to pass the peace with those around you. Peace, table. blessing it is to share the peace again, isn't it? I, I love that part of, of our church family that in the, in the Sundays when we share the peace and we, and we hug and shake hands and share our lives with each other and it, it's just so good to have it back. Um, I have the announcements and first of all I would like to um, welcome Katie and Lily Bradigan and thank you very much for being here and ministering to us with your music. Following the service today, everyone please join us in the Williamsburg Room for Hospitality Hour, and it is hosted by Joan Bell. 
The church will not be opened on Monday until 9.30 due to Anita having a doctor's appointment. Pastor Ken will be back in the office on June 29th. The prayer meeting is continuing. It is on Wednesday, June 30th at noon in the chapel. And the Wednesday evening Bible study will not be held in the month of June. However, it will be resuming on July 7th at 6.30 p.m. Please also check your bulletins for any other upcoming events. And are there any announcements from the congregation? If not, please join me in prayer. God, whom we know through scriptures and creation, speak to us in this hour. Show us the wisdom and joy of your ways, that we may know what is good and do what is right. Through Jesus Christ, your word, amen. The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 2, um, verses 18 and 21 through 25. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So the Lord God calls the deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hand. Crafted into your perfect plan You gently call me into your presence Guiding me by your Holy Spirit Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life by your holy calling set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself lead me Lord I pray take me mold me use me
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. In the reading that I am doing this morning, it's from Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to the one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord <clears throat> is not quickly broken. The word of the Lord. I'm going to start by reading you a letter this morning that expresses a lot of love in it. So listen to these words in this letter. Dearest Jimmy, no words could ever express the great unhappiness I've felt since breaking our engagement. Please say you'll take me back. No one can ever take your place, Jimmy, in my heart. So please forgive me. I love you so much, Jimmy. I hope you hear my plea and take me back. Yours forever, Marie. P.S. Congratulations on winning the lottery. <laughs> You like that one, Neil? <laughs> Some people think that's what love is all about, and what you can do for each other and what the others have that you might want in things. But there is another example of love that I want to share with you this morning that is truly what being there for someone else is all about. Jackie Robinson was the first black American to play baseball in the major leagues. And we have all heard throughout our lifetime about breaking the color barrier in, uh, in sports. But he didn't do it without a lot of problems. People were hostile wherever they went to him when he went on the field and they, they just did not receive Jackie well. And they were playing in Brooklyn at his home field and he made an error. And everyone started booing. And the, the crowd was just booing and he's standing out there with his head bowed and just feeling so humiliated and just could not imagine why. Why he even wanted to do this and maybe it was time to quit. And through all these boos, all of a sudden he looked up and Pee Wee Reese came walking over and put his arm around Jackie and stood there with them and looked up at the crowd. And the crowd went silent. And Jackie says that that is the moment that saved his baseball career because someone came and was there for him and gave him the support that he needed. So that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning. How we can be there for each other. What it means to care for someone else. We don't have to go it alone, folks. We weren't meant to go it alone. Cheryl just read to us the scripture from creation in Genesis. It's interesting about this scripture in creation. If you go back a few verses, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, it is good. God created the sea, and he said, it is good. God created the animals, and he said, it is good. And then here we are in the verses Cheryl read, where he created man, and God looked, and he said, it is not good that man should be alone. From the very beginning of creation, it was 
designed into each of us that it's not good to be alone. God does not want man to be alone. He knew that man needed relationship, support, care. But that's not just in Genesis. What did I read? I read it read in Ecclesiastes. And what does it say? Two are better than one. Because if one falls, the other one can help them up. When you're lying, sleeping, two are better than one because you'll get the warmth off the other body. We're all used to heating, air conditioning, all the things in the modern, uh, modern world. But back before the time that we live in, you needed another body to keep you warm because the fire went out during the night. And there wasn't any heat. There wasn't any, anything to uh, generate uh, warmth around you. But what we need is not so much the bodily warmth, but the strength of a friend that will love us and care for us. So when you have a difficult time in your life, you don't have to sit there and try to figure it out alone. You will have someone else who cares for you to be there with you. Well, what about the statement about the cords? What did it say? It said three strands are better than two because they, they connect and they hold each other up. When we face difficulties in our lives, it is... It, I was going to say impossible, but that's, that's a stretch. It's not impossible to do it alone, but it sure hurts to do it alone. It is much better to have somebody there with us to help us. It's much better to not go it alone. Because what did God say? It is not good that man is alone. So from the very beginning, God said, we need each other. We can't do it alone. All of us in this room, well, except for a couple of little ones in the back, uh, but all of us other than that in this room will remember uh, Friends, when Friends came on TV, and all of these college kids, young people, whatever they were, living together, and now they're old and they still, whatever. But they, they came together as community. They needed each other. They were there for each other. And my favorite one goes back a little bit longer than Friends. It goes back to Cheers. Remember Cheers on TV? And every time the show started, go somewhere where someone knows my name. I was going to ask if Troy knew the song and he could play it, you know, add a little bit of, you know, um, some music to the sermon, but I forgot to ask him to do that. But isn't, don't you remember that? where I can go and some, everyone knows my name. When we walk into church, the community that they talk about in a bar should be the community that's happening in a church. When you go to church, people should know your name. They should shake your hand, give you a hug. There should be a common thread that brings us all together. We have visitors here today that are not a part of Market Street. But guess what? We are still all part of the family, the connection, the threads that are wound together because of our faith, because of our belief in God created us all. And because of that, we belong together. We can hug and shake hands and all of those things. This past year, if nothing else, demonstrated how much we need each other. 
with the pandemic and being locked down and can't go anywhere and can't do this and it, Cheryl mentioned a few moments ago about you know even once we came back to church and we're at church well, all right no passing of the peace no passing of the um, uh, the offering plates no passing out uh, um, bulletins none of those things because we, we can't touch you know, and oh, heaven forbid if you hug somebody, you know, oh my gosh, the, you know, whatever. And what, ha what happened in all of that? If you haven't read or heard any news uh, over the last, uh, the last few months as we've been coming out of the pandemic and all of the restrictions, do you know what's being said over and over and over? The rise in loneliness the rise in depression, the rise in suicides, the rise in drug addictions, the rise in alcohol abuse. The, those, those things continue to be out of control in our country. And I believe it's because we were so isolated. We were not together. We were, we were, you know, the old uh, Amish ways. We were kind of shunned. And it didn't feel right. And we knew it wasn't right. We knew it wasn't right. Oh, we were told, pick up the phone and call somebody. Okay. It's not the same thing, folks. Don't, I'll, do not have a birthday party. Oh, no, no. Grandparents, do not hug your... Imagine, you've got a almost month-old grandbaby right now. Imagine if right now you were told, oh, don't touch her, don't pick her up, don't hold her. We have had that happen in our world many times. And anybody in the medical field will know what I'm talking about. It's called the failure to thrive. And supposedly smart people over the years have done studies to see what would happen to a month old baby if they weren't cuddled, if they weren't held. Back in the 40s, recently, Recently, a, um, a study was done by, um, uh, and I want to turn to the page where I've got it, because I want to read exactly what, what they did. It was in South America, and they wanted to do a study to see what would happen if the children received good medical care, but no emotional or physical contact. And so there were 97 children in the orphanage. They were low on funds, low on staff, and they said, you've got to do just the necessities. So you've got to go feed them, change their diaper, and move on. Feed them, change their diaper, and move on. We don't have enough time to sit there and take the time to cuddle them and talk to them and, and those type of things. And so that's what was done in South America. And the ages of the children were three months to three years. They changed their diapers, they fed them, they bathed them, but that was it. And after three months, many of them showed signs of abnormality. Besides the loss of appetite and being unable to sleep well, many of the children lay with a vacant, ex vacant expression in their eyes. And after five months of serious deterioration set in, they lay whimpering. And if someone tried to touch them, they screamed because they weren't used to touch. They didn't know, they, they weren't able to fit, understand that. 27, almost one third of them died the first year. Not from lack of food or health care, but from lack of touch. The second year, seven more died. Only 20 of the 97 survived, and most of them suffering emotional 
and psychological damage. From Genesis, it is not good for man to be alone. God created us to be touched and hugged and loved. He knew that's what a human being would need. So what do we do with all of this? What do we do with all of these thoughts and feelings? Are you connected with someone else? Do you care about other people? When I look around this church, I see that we do care about each other. And there are things that are happening that make a difference. Thursday afternoons, there's bridge club meets here. They share a meal, they enjoy, a, uh, enjoy some fellowship as they're playing cards and doing things. They, they know each other, they know their hurts and their set. And I can tell you from playing cards in the past and whatever, when you're playing cards, you, you start talking, you know? You start saying things that maybe you wouldn't if you were just sitting next to somebody. But you relax and you share your feelings. The men, the men have started a Friday uh, men's fellowship. Why? Because men need to get together just as much as talking women need to get together. I know somebody that a few years back got together with a friend and went out to eat after work. And then it's pretty much they invited someone else and they invited someone else and they invited someone else. And Pretty soon they called it therapy night because they got together and shared. They were from this, you know, someone worked here, someone was retired, someone went here, whatever. These two people went to church together, these people didn't. They went here, they went there. But guess what? They made a pact in the beginning. The thing that saved and made therapy night what it is. They said, we're not going to complain. We're not going to talk about our boss. We're not going to talk about our co-workers. We're not going to complain about the preacher. We're not going to talk about what's going on at our church. We're not going to. We're going to come and have fun together. And years later, therapy night's still going on every Wednesday. Because that's what people need. I always wish they'd invite me, but they never did. Anyway. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway. Um, but isn't that... That's what it's about, folks. We need therapy nights. We need to come together with others that will care for us and love us and put their arm around us. One of the saddest things for people that end, uh, are in a assisted living facility or a nursing home, one of the saddest things is they say, no one ever touches me every morning. You know, they come in and do things, but I don't know when the last time was somebody hugged me. I don't know when the last time was somebody gave me a kiss. That's what it feels like on the same other end of the spectrum as talking about the babies that weren't getting care. When we're older, we still need it. When our spouse dies, who hugs us anymore? gives us a peck on the cheek. Who does any of those things? And we miss it. We miss that human connection, that support, that love. But to have these type of relationships, there are three things that are required to have a co close connection with other human beings. Number one is time. You gotta take time. Having a friendship doesn't happen overnight. Just going out to eat for lunch once doesn't cause a friendship. It takes time and another visit and another time and pretty soon you start relaxing. But we live in a world that says, oh, you know, keep going, uh, grab a sandwich and, and through the drive through and drive down the road and eat and drink and don't, don't stop, don't take time to sit down and visit and share with someone. And we bought into that. We've bought into it. And then what happens? I'll confess. And I'll look at Ruth when I confess. 
when you're alone, it gets easier and easier to be alone. So if someone comes up to you after church and says, you want to go out to eat with us? And then you think, oh, I just want to get these shoes off and, get, and, and whatever. And then, so you make excuses and not go out to eat with the ladies after church because it's easier to go home and sit down in the recliner and put your feet up. Because it's easier not to invest time in yourself. One of the other reasons is fear. Well, I'm a preacher, so I've got it all together. I have no problems, no issues. I get along perfectly with everybody. But if I sit down and get to know people, pretty much they're going to find out, well, she's as nutty as we are. <laughs> they're going to begin to realize that she doesn't have it all together. We come into this sanctuary on a Sunday morning with our best, reasonably best clothes that we want to wear today. And we put on a big smile and we make everyone in this room think we've got it. We don't have any problems, we don't have any issues, everything is wonderful. And then somebody that doesn't know how to pretend like we do says, oh, man, I'm not like them. I've got problems. You know, I, I've got this issue and that issue. And so I better not, you know, uh, I better stay clear because if I open up and tell them about my problems, they're going to think I'm weird. When reality is we all have got problems. We all are not smiling on the inside some days but we put on a good front on the outside. And then, the last reason we don't like to form friendships is conflict. Well, what if we don't agree on something? We were getting along so well, and now you brought up politics, and I'm on this end, and you're on that end, and we start arguing about politics. And we're afraid of the conflict that's going to come. Well, guess what, folks? All of us in this room don't all agree on politics. All of us in this room do not agree on climate change. I'm just th picking things out of the air that come to my mind. We don't agree on these type of things, and it's okay. Why have we lost the ability to say, well, that's good, Cheryl. But, you know, I really think differently, but so be it. You can believe what you believe, and I'll believe what I believe, and we're still friends. We've lost that ability to do that. And so we end up alone because we want to have our own thoughts and our own feelings, and we are right. And we aren't going to talk to anybody that doesn't agree with us. So we've got to stop all of that. We've got to allow our friendships, the core of human being, of, of a human being is belonging, is to be together. Study after study, scientific, psychological, uh, sociological, all of these studies keep coming back to the same thing, that we need each other. We need to belong somewhere. We need to feel included. We need to feel like we matter. When I first came to Lima 30 years ago, I used to say 25 and then I realized it's now 30, but when I first came, I was a part at the hospital, at Memorial, um, we had what was called Project Reality. And every uh, last Thursday of every month, um, uh, the juvenile court system brought teenagers to the hospital. And uh, there, the, the team was made up of EMTs and doctor and, and nurse and chaplain. And we would bring these kids in that were in the court system. And we'd talk to them about the reality of the choices they were making. Because so many of them were involved in, uh, in drug activity or um, uh, uh, gang violence, those type of things. And so we would show them what happens. You know, it's one thing to be um, 
uh, taking drugs and, and, and the high you get, but what happens when it goes wrong? And so then we would do a demonstration and we went full blown. We would uh, had an ER room ready and we had a, e, uh, had a uh, person that would pretend that they came in and they were in an overdose and the doctors would come in and the nurses and you pretend you were intubating them and you were doing CPR and you were doing all these things. And so you went through the whole thing to say, this is what happens on the other end. You think this ends good, but here's what happens on the other end. And then we talked about gang violence. And I was amazed as I would sit and talk to some of these young men. I'd say, why? You know, in, in fact, the one in particular that I remember talking with that just got, just, I was so shocked and overwhelmed by what he told me and he was there because he'd he'd, uh, he'd been in pretty bad physical shape because he'd be, been beaten up so bad and I said why and it was the initiation for the gang they would have three or four guys beat you up and you know and if you could survive being beat up then you could join the gang and I just said, why would you do that? Why would you let somebody do that to you? And he said, I want to belong. That's the gang on my street, and I want to be a part. I want to belong. So even, even if it means being hurt, or uh, all the horrors that come with gang activities, this young man was willing to take it because that would mean he belonged somewhere. Back to Genesis. It's not good for man to be alone. We still, all these years later, still have that desire built in us to belong to somebody, to, to be there, and, and to feel like someone cares about me. How are we going to fit all this together? How are we going to live our lives in such a way that we belong somewhere, that we love other people, that we allow them to love us, we allow them to put their arms around us and care for us? I believe the answer in our society is not in gangs. Excuse me, ladies, it's not in a bridge club. It's not in therapy night. It's not in um, uh, belonging to a certain organization. It's belonging to the family of God. It's being a part of God's family. It's being a part of a church that will support and love and care for each other. That's where we need to belong. That's where we need to be connected. That's where we need to know that what we do makes a difference. And then... When we figure that out as a church, and I believe this is what needs to happen in our world today. When the church figures out how to be a family and how to care and love for others, they need to go out in the community and care for the people on the south end, on the north end, on wherever. In, go into a bar, go into a, a whatever. We need to stop hiding in our churches. We need to get out there where the people are and where the needs are. And until we do that, our world is going to be a mess. A famous Saint Francis prayer I want to close with. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love. That where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is discord, I may bring harmony. And where there is error, I may bring truth. And where there is doubt, I may bring faith. And where there is despair, I may bring hope. And where there are shadows, I may bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. 
For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. And it is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. John chose a perfect song to sing after this sermon. A part of the family of God. we have another opportunity that comes to us. That's the opportunity to give back to God a portion of the blessings and the gifts that he's given to us. So would the ushers please come forward.
may you take these tithes and offerings and may you double them and quadruple them to be able to be used for your kingdom, be able to be used for missions to reach others, to hear the word and to know how much they are loved and cared for by you, God. Thank you for the willingness of the hearts of the people to bring back these gifts to you. Amen. You may be seated. As we go to a time of prayer, there's a couple of things that need to um, be mentioned. Uh, one is um, um, Priscilla Tuttle died this past Thursday, and um, so we need to be remembering uh, the family, uh, her children and grandchildren, and um, uh, uh, there's going to be private uh, graveside services and um, no visitation. But please uh, take a moment in your prayers to remember the family and lift them up. Sue and Ron are not, Ron's not here this morning. Sue Bell had gallbladder surgery yesterday. Uh, and so please uh, continue to send the card. She was the uh, chosen uh, person for shut in for cards this month so send a send a card this week to her a get well card because uh, she's in uh, St. Rita's and had surgery yesterday and Ron's there with her so please um, please be remembering them um, in your prayers um, Sandy um, our um, uh, secretary um, Anita talked to Missy uh, the middle of the end of the week and said that hospice said probably you know a week or so so please continue to remember Sandy and Missy and Roger and the grandchildren in, in your prayers uh, someone else have a need they would like to share with the congregation Joni well, oh that's right you have a joy <laughs> tell us your joy Your first great grandbaby. Someone else have a joy. We, I don't think you can. All right. I just want to say that uh, I'm going to say that I what a blessing it was when Priscilla passed. Um, she knew she was loved. Uh, two days before she died, Donnie was there and was with her, and I'm sure she was touching her and loving her. The next day I came with flowers, and we had a wonderful uh, uh, discussion. She, she was sharp as a pen, and then she when they came together for lunch the day she died, she was sitting there holding the book with her reading glasses on, doing her favorite thing. How wonderful is that? It is amazing how when we care for each other that it matters. Um, I mentioned um, um, that I was going to go for visit Primrose, and not um, um, and I visited uh, Natalie and Jenny Biggs, and I went and saw Priscilla, and we had a wonderful visit. We were talking, well, we were talking about who was the oldest, her and Natalie, and we were talking about age, and and we were talking about um, uh, and we were talking about the church, and we talked about Marge Webb, and um, we we just had a wonderful visit, and I was so. Well, I will add that she said to me, I asked her how she was doing, and she said, well, she was at the doctor last week, and he said, um, you, I need to, you need to go in the hospital. And she said, no, I don't want to go. And he said, all right, I'll give you two weeks. Two weeks, and if you're not better in two weeks, then I'm going to put you in the hospital in two weeks. And she said, okay. And she said, I'm going to be better next week because I don't want to go to the hospital. And so we just talked about those type of things and that it it's important to be there and to care for each other. And, but I was, I was very shocked when I got the phone call uh, on Thursday um, that Priscilla had died. I was like, seriously? I mean, she was 
sharp as a tack, alert, talking, joking. We had a great visit. And so we never know. We never know what today or the next day or the next week holds for us. So we need to live our life to the fullest and love and support everyone around us because that's what makes all the difference. Anyone else? Jason. Uh, It, it, okay. Um, it's very hard when we come up on anniversaries and, and dates of someone when we, someone we love has died and we come up on those anniversaries. It's very difficult. What's your mom's name? That's it. I was trying to remember. Jason and I go back. I, I knew him when he was, I, he said I shouldn't say that, but I knew him when he was that little uh, because I worked with his grandmother at Lima Memorial. And so uh, Betty and I used to talk a lot and she'd talk about her. She always said good things about you, Jason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and so, and I did know your mom also, and uh, work with her. So, uh, please remember Deb and, um, and uh, the family as they are coming on of anniversaries uh, and her surgeries. Anyone else? Let's go to God in prayer. God, it's amazing that you created this universe. You created everything that in it. You created man and woman. But you still are able to listen to the cries of our heart and hear our prayers. There is nothing insignificant in our lives that you don't care about. You care about our relationships with our families, with our friends, with our co-workers. You care about it when we have surgery. You care. You rejoice when we're going to have a great grandbaby. You rejoice when something good happens in our lives and we get the job we've been looking for. You rejoice when things aren't as bad as we thought they could be. And you cry with us when we cry. Be in our minds and in our hearts to let us know that we are not alone. You said in very creation, it is not good for man to be alone, and we're not alone. We have others, we have family and friends, but we are always loved by you, God, and you're always there with us. So we pray that you will be with Deb as she's having surgery. You'll be with her as she's grieving and remembering her husband. We pray for um, Priscilla's family as they're remembering her and the their children and grandchildren and they're celebrating her life Lord and Lord we pray for Sue as she's recovering from surgery we just ask your blessing upon each and every one of us here today and I ask you to meet the greatest need in each of our lives this week and now Lord we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we go from this place, we're going to sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder in honor of Patricia, who is back with us after a long absence because of falls and, and uh, health issues. And so we are singing this in your honor today. Please stand and sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder.
be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather over on the August stars, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. that choice. That was pretty good. I like it. All right. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Uh, I have enjoyed the month of June being here uh, at the church and uh, you'll see me again. Uh, I can't get rid of me. Pastor Ken said I can come anytime I want so don't be surprised. You'll see me again and enjoy, uh, enjoy this week. And now Go and remember God's word. It is not good for man to be alone. So be with someone, hug them, kiss them, love on them, and let them know that they matter to you. Go in peace.